right, folks, we are back live now into the second hour. And I want to open the phones up so you can uh, give us your take on the death of mainstream media, the death of state-run media. Now, CNN, MSNBC, New York Times, they're all dead now. They admit no one listens to them. They can't cause a debate. They can't stir any discussion. The Pentagon, the White House bemoans that things like DrudgeReport.com, Infowars.com are actually able to shape debate, get people to actually look at certain topics. Um, we had Bill Maher on Friday freak out and attack Matt Drudge and say how dare him be able to get people to look at certain news items and bemoan that the reason we can't fix America is because of all the horrible stuff that Matt Drudge is linking to. That shows how they've literally gone to the throwing fits. Throwing fits over the fact that their audiences are dwindling. The problem is there's still a good audience for sitcoms, dramas, children's cartoons, entertainment, NFL football. And that's where you've got the anti-gun, pro-Obamacare, anti-family garbage. And there's an article that just went up on Infowars.com by Paul Joseph Watson with a video report titled, Obama Seizes Control of Late Night Television. And when you go into the article, Watson breaks down the recent replacement of Jay Leno with Obama cheerleader Jimmy Fallon as part of a White House coup d'etat to take control of late night television. With more and more young Americans deserting news networks and getting their information and opinions from late night comedy discussion shows, the establishment is moving into using the entertainment industry as its primary conduit for state propaganda. Distrust in the institution of television news is hovering at an all-time low which is why one of the few places left with the White House to elicit a sympathetic response to its agenda and talking points is cozy, make-believe world of late-night television. While Barack Obama is pursuing a chillingly dictatorial political agenda based around executive tyranny, Jimmy Fallon is helping to um, massage Obama's image as a down-to-earth, fun-loving guy that you can trust. While Jay Leno savaged Obama in his final weeks as host, one of Fallon's first acts was to afford Michelle Obama the platform on The Tonight Show to push Obamacare talking points. Fallon even once gushed that President Obama booked himself. While the media has pondered on the mystery of Leno being replaced, he enjoyed consistently high ratings for 20 years. The reality is strikingly obvious. As Politico and others have reported, this is part of the changing politics of late night TV with the Obama White House now moving to seize control of late night television with Fallon acting as little more than a White House spokesman whenever the need arises. You can watch the video above and read the articles below for more background. That is up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. So just because we're winning the war against CNN and MSNBC, you got to understand, folks, you turn on children's cartoons, it's pushing socialism, anti-family, anti-gun, Obamacare. You turn on NFL, same thing. You turn on late night shows, it's the same deal. And if you criticize Obama in any way, you're off the air. But then they still kick themselves off the air by not having a message of freedom. And as young people get hit with Obamacare doubling and tripling their costs, as they get hit with having their hours cut from 40 to 20 hours, as they get hit with all this, they're not going to want to hear from trendy Fallon how great Obama is. The numbers show even young people are deserting him. That's the group Obama says they hope make Obamacare work. They hope you're dumb enough to go be part of this. How can we not have the Republicans repeal this when it's a total win issue? Because they're part of the same power structure. And you point out to liberal Democrats that the Republicans help write this. It's the Republican and Democratic leadership against the Tea Party. If you people don't wake up to that, you're fools. And I'm talking to mainline Democrats. Is there nothing you people won't buy into? Why? Because you feel like you're a winner because somebody like Fallon, Jimmy Fallon, is cool and... He gets up there in a tuxedo and makes jokes, and Obama comes on and they high-five. I mean, this is so cynical. They're preying on you, and admittedly preying on you. While Piers Morgan blasts holes in the Constitution, in the Bill of Rights, in the Declaration of Independence. They are literally trying to blow holes in your basic liberties, in your basic freedoms. So I thought... 
I'd give the number out. What is your take on Piers Morgan? Do you think it's a big victory for Liberty? Or just another sign that Dinosaur Media is on the way out? 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. And we will get you up and on the air. Are you going to be sad to see him go? Folks, he was already had almost no viewers for the three years he was there. And it just got worse and worse. But it, it's part of a trend across the board. Yes, his slimy, elitist affect only made it that much worse. And he admitted, by the way, I can you know, read the quote uh, for folks out there. It's up on Infowars.com. He said, look, I'm a British guy debating American cultural issues, including guns, which has been very polarizing. And there's no doubt that there are many in the audience who are tired of me banging on about it. But that was your mission. That was your job. So what do, what do they do? They, they, they follow their mission to overthrow our republic, but it still discredits them because they're unpopular, so they lose the hearts and minds. So what are they going to do? They're going to send the Pentagon in to take over the local blogs and media. They're going to try to buy off the alternative media that is the new media. They're going to try to cognitively infiltrate, as Cass Sunstein said at the White House, and cause infighting between different groups of libertarians, real liberals, conservatives, constitutionalists. That's why... If you are pro-liberty and anti-NSA spying and anti-aggressive war and anti-victim disarmament, if we can just agree on those libertarian ideas, I don't have to agree with you on every issue. we got to come together and say, hey, we want our Bill of Rights. We want our Constitution. We've got to get to that point. We've got to be able to do that. We've got to be able to come together and, and, and admit that the Republican and Democratic leadership at the top are working together to systematically get rid of checks and balances for offshore corporate interests that have seized much of the nation at the highest levels and are literally extracting us, as Dylan Radigan said. Dylan Radigan's been pretty much a Democrat, folks, but he I could watch his show and most of what he said was true because he's a common sense guy that doesn't want to destroy the country. Just like Ron Paul's a Republican, but he's a common sense guy that doesn't want to destroy the country. They're just good people. Now, Bill Maher, Rachel Maddow, People like that are predators, folks, who know what they're doing and are doing a party line. Let's go to this farewell. We're, gonna we're not going to talk about Piers Morgan after this. I haven't talked about him a lot in the last year since I was on a show. But the Financial Times of London and others say that a record of controversy, Piers Morgan career at CNN. And it begins with he's been axed because he had terrible ratings. And it goes on. In the second paragraph, it's hard to imagine just what Mr. Morgan thought would happen when he invited Alex Jones, noted conspiracy theorist, gun advocate, and anti-government radio host on a show to talk about the right to keep and bear arms in the July 2012 mass shooting in a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado. And just to stir up further passion, Mr. Jones was behind a petition to deport Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan barely managed to get a word in with Mr. Jones, got going, bouncing from mainstream media controversy to rape in India, to Stalin Mao in 1776, commencing again. If there were not enough, Mr. Morgan followed that with a panel debate on whether it was good to shoot Mr. Jones. And then they go on in over 200 articles to cite the beginning of the end of Morgan when he let me on that show. Let's go ahead and go to a compilation. Anybody that wants to make me unarmed and helpless, mm -hmm. people that want to literally create the proven places where more innocents are killed, called gun-free zones, mm -hmm. we're going to beat you. We're going to vote bill. you out of office yes. or suck in my machine yes. gun. And that's why you're going to fail, and the establishment knows, no matter how much propaganda, the republic will rise again when you attempt to take our guns. I think we need to ban gun control laws that keep people from being able to protect themselves. Anybody that wants to disarm me can drop dead. The, the problem is not going to go away if we ban this or that gun. We've tried that. That doesn't work. doesn't even work in England. You've had mass murders there. All over Europe there have been mass murders. You're the solution is for people utter, to be able to defend themselves at the point of the crime nonsense. and not wait for 20 minutes for the police to come after everybody's said, dead. Mr. Pratt was an absolute lie. I was in the Philippines physically. The day Ferdinand Marcos declared martial law and made himself a dictator. And the first thing that dictator did, he gave the people of the Philippines two weeks to turn in all their guns or it was the death penalty. Now, why would a dictator do that? Why would he make his number one priority when he took over as dictator to disarm the public? My family in the Texas Revolution against Santa Ana, my family was at the core on both sides starting that. Because Santa Ana came to take the guns at Gonzales, Texas. Pierce, 
Don't try what your ancestors did before. Why don't you come to America? I'll take you out shooting. You can become an American and join the Republic. You finished? America is not the, the Wild West that you are depicting. We only have the problem in our cities and, and, and unhappily in our schools where people like you have been able to get laws put on the books that keep people from being able to defend themselves. I honestly don't understand why you would rather have people be victims of a crime than be able to defend themselves. It's incomprehensible. You're an unbelievably stupid man, aren't you? I, it seems to me that you're morally obtuse. You seem to prefer being a victim to being able to prevail over the criminal element. I'll All tell right. you what, Piers. I have a conceal and carry license. Had I been in there, I would have taken this guy out before he could have killed that many people. What a ridiculous argument. You have absolutely no hey, bye -bye, red coherent coat. argument Don't whatsoever. let the door you hit on your big you old fat you baboon booty. You don't give a damn, do you, about bye -bye, the gun murder Piers. in America? Bye-bye. You are watching the best of the Alex Jones Show, weekdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. Watch live at InfoWars.com forward slash show or become a member of InfoWarsNews.com and help us take resistance to the next level.